So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're wrapped up here at the Dream Dive Locker. I know we've only been in this space for a year, but we've already outgrown it. Luckily, on my way to South Africa, I happened to find a new studio space, which I really think, yeah, it's inhabited right now, but I think it's a good space that Divers Ready could grow into. In fact, I'm heading there now, so I want to show you guys. Who is it? It's Matthias. Oh, hey, Matthias. What's going on? What do you want? What do you mean what I want? It's my freaking office. Oh, well, do you have Guinness? Of course I have Guinness. Oh, come on in then. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James, and this is the first in our series of Meet My Dive Buddies for the year 2021. And it's already August. I can't believe it. it's taken me this long. But we have a truly special one because I'm here with my dear friend, colleague, collaborator, Matthias Labo, who you guys know from the Across the Ocean series. We haven't said cheers yet, mate. Cheers. We haven't. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having the Guinness prepared. Mmm. Mm. Oh, this is divine. Oh, yeah. Guinness and Zurich. How about that? I haven't had Guinness in a long time. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's the way forward. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, fantastic to be here. Thank you so much for hosting. And, and Pleasure. you know, we've been doing a bunch of stuff. Obviously, the live stream that went out, well, we haven't done it yet, but this evening. And uh, and a couple more episodes of Across the Ocean yeah. and, and obviously this episode and stuff. And just great to see you work and hang in the studio and... You know, the space you've got here is amazing. So Thank I'm going to give, give people some sneaky behind the, behind the scenes sure. stuff. Because people love that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But we're here to talk about in this series of videos, you. So we're going to take it right back to the beginning. Okay. How did you get into diving? <laughs> it somehow just happened, really. I think I tried diving for the very first time when I was on a, uh, on a vacation with a friend of mine in Egypt. And we were there for a week. It was August. It was like 45 degrees Celsius. We didn't know what to do. Uh, both of us had never dived before. And then on the second last day, lying on the beach, trying to uh, not be in the sun directly, um, a pretty girl walked up to us and asked whether we were interested in doing an introductory dive. And even if I wasn't into diving, I had to do it. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, a pretty girl walks up to you, asks you for... If you want to spend money, you're going to say yes, right? So that girl was the instructor. She took me on a dive. And uh, even if it was someone else, if it had been someone else, it was mind-blowing. My very first dive was in the Red Sea. It was colorful. It was warm. It was fishy. It was everything you dream of. Yeah. And ever since, I was hooked. Yeah. The exact opposite of my first dive. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. So when did you start, when did you add underwater filming to your diving? Were you recreational diving for a long time before you got your first camera or was it a natural marriage straight away? No, I was actually, I, I did uh, quite a few years of just being a diver and then I transitioned fairly quickly from after getting my open water course into um, food education courses, advanced and so on. And it took me about a year and a half, I think, from my open water course until I had all the credentials and everything to become a dive master. So I became a dive master, did that for like a year or so, and then um, I did my um, my IDC, my uh, open water scuba instructor certification. Still, up until this time, camera was no no topic at all. Yeah. I didn't really, I, I wasn't interested in filming or taking photos underwater whatsoever. But then when I started. Um, trying to explain the fascination of being underwater to my friends, my family, and none of them were divers back then. It was really, really hard for me to, you know, um, to bring that spark over to them why it's so, it's so fascinating and why it means so much to me to be underwater. And I couldn't explain it in words. It didn't work. I just yeah. couldn't. So I tried first picking up a camera, taking photos, and that worked to a certain degree. But still, it wasn't as being underwater, obviously, as you know. So it was just sort of a logical um, succession that I started filming underwater. And I was I had this, this inner motivation. I wanted to capture the underwater world exactly the way I see it 
so I can show it to other people that are not as fortunate as I am, that cannot dive or are not divers, to, to show to them what they're missing and how beautiful it is underwater. And that's when I started actually filming. So by the time I picked up a camera and started filming underwater, I must have had probably close to a thousand dives already. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So where did you do your dive master in your RDC? Uh, both in Cairns in Australia. Yeah. Uh, at the same dive school where I did my open water class. Oh, wow. Uh, a couple of years later, I returned back there because I liked it so much and the diving was really cool. Um, and I did my um, instructor there one year and then came back the next year and did my uh, IDC there as well. Right. Dive master and then your IDC. Yeah, correct. Yeah, perfect. And did you work down there as well? I did, yeah. Um, I did a little bit of work as a dive master, but it was difficult because being in Australia as a Swiss person, it's very difficult to get a work permit, a work oh, okay. visa. So I was doing a bit of work, sort of sketchy work here and there. I wasn't really being paid. I wasn't being employed, but I was being allowed to go with other groups and, you know, kind of assisting without pay, but I was able to just dive for free and stuff that you do when you're young and yeah. money doesn't really... Interning. Exactly, <laughs> right, exactly. When you were, we were just happy that you get uh, something to eat and you're able to dive. And yeah. That's pretty much all that mattered for me then. Exactly. The um, things we do for no money. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, yeah. Hopefully not anymore. Um, well, yeah, so that's how I... Um, how I got a little bit into the working field there, and then after I got my uh, my IDC, my instructor certification, they desperately needed someone in able, who was able to teach in German, being Swiss, Swiss German. It was it was just a perfect fit, and yeah. they got my uh, sponsorship. I was sponsored then by the company, and I was able to stay and work for them for two years. Um, and that was the longest that I've stayed in one spot as a as a dive instructor, uh, a little over two years. And it was, it was great. I loved it. Australia is a fantastic place to work. Um, and they've got really good diving too. So, yeah. yeah. What was your best story about working in Australia? Anything particularly stick out? The best story? What was the best story? Well, we had a... I remember once um, on... Because we were on liverboard, right? So the, the way this operation worked is we were two days in the pool in the classroom. And then we took our students out for three days onto a liverboard. A two, three-day liverboard. We uh, stayed overnight with them and they were able to finish their open water class and get like an adventure class on top of that as well if they wanted. Um, there was always a night dive, the two nights were on there. On the second night, I remember it was a uh, it was fairly rough seas. We got out after the night dive on the second night and we had like a big bucket where we put all the rental torches in there, all the flashlights. So Oscar, who was my dive supervisor uh, in charge of the entire boat at that, on that trip, big Kiwi guy, like he used to play professionally rugby. So he okay. was like huge, like, like he could actually pull people out of the water just by holding to the tank well. In their gear. Yeah. In their gear. <laughs> so we were, um, we were, it was very rough seas and the boat at the back was doing like this. And it was really difficult to get out of the water using the ladder. So Oscar being on the boat, he would actually just grab the people by the tank and just literally lift them out, set them on the back deck, off you go, next one, pull them out like that. <laughs> so he did it the entire night until everyone was out. We had all the torches, all the flashlights in the bucket. Everyone was out, we're just switching off the back lights. A big wave comes over the back deck and flashes away the entire bucket with all the flashlights. They land down in 14, 15 meters right underneath the boat. And we were like, oh no, now we have to get back in there and recover them. And we were prepared for everything, you know, like torches everywhere spread out over the ocean floor. We get in there, we dive down and you wouldn't believe it. The entire box, it must have fallen straight down like this. There was one torch which was outside the box about a <laughs> meter away. All the other flashlights that were sitting right inside the box and we bring it back up to Incredible. The Incredible. Even in rough weather, you would have thought it would yeah, like tip yeah, and scattered exactly. everywhere. Yeah. And nothing happened. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. So then obviously you're most known for and your channel is all about underwater filming and video now. Yep. Uh, you are a professional underwater videographer. That is your day job as well as your passion, yep. as well as YouTube and all the other avenues that you've got. Correct. Um, at what point did you decide to go pro? When did you mm -hmm. say, my video is good enough now that I can charge clients honest money? Um, it was probably the point where clients started, or not clients, but um, owners of dive resorts and, uh, and liverboards 
started asking me for the footage that I've recorded. Because yeah. when I returned back to Switzerland about 10 years ago, I started working for a dive tour operator, first of all. And I was, I was selling my passion. I was selling dive trips, which was great because I was having a steady job here in Switzerland, decently paid, and I was still in the field of, of uh, scuba diving, right? Um, obviously, that's, this all meant that I had to travel a lot to see all the, the different places and the locations that we sold. So I was that able must be to really tough. Yeah, very, very bad life. I was able to travel to all these amazing places and basically go there for free and just check out the places. I always had my camera with me. I always filmed. And at the end, I started just putting little sequences, little clips together. People started seeing that. Uh, they started asking me whether they can use these clips for their social media. At first, I just gave it away. And then at one point, I was like, hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. This could actually be a business model. So I started asking something in return and not just, you know, free stay and free diving, but actually monetary wise. So I started asking money in return for that. And people, even without me actually expecting they would say yes, they said yes. And they gave me, they started paying me for it a little at the beginning. And as this started sort of unraveling and, and unfolding, I just, I was able to charge more and more for it. Um, and nowadays... It's basically, uh, it's not that I can pick the jobs that I want to do, but I can certainly say no to the jobs that I don't want to do, which wasn't the case earlier on. Yeah. I just took everything that was thrown at me. Nowadays, I can say, I think this is a good cause. I want to put my time and energy into this, or I rather don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, and this is how it, how it all sort of developed and how I got into filming professionally. Um, and it's, it's difficult to say that there's one single point in time where this decision was made, but it's more like... You try and it's proving a concept. And if you can do that a couple of times and if people keep approaching you, asking you for the footage, um, then you can either sell your time and, and um, yeah, your time basically to go there and shoot for them or you can sell them stuff that you've already shot, sort of stock footage yeah, stuff. And that's also, that's also one of my revenue streams that I just sell stuff that I filmed over the years as stock footage and it's been featured in, in, in BBC, National Geographic's uh, productions where these shots have been used in. Amazing. So it's also, it's not something that you're going to be living off purely of that, but it's definitely something that helps paying for all this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's an expensive hobby and if it's just money going out, it's, exactly. it's tough to sustain for any, yep. any long period of time. Um, but you touch on something there that I talk about on the channel a lot. And that is as a dive professional. So you're already an instructor, mm -hmm. then you're adding the videography in, and then you're realizing, hey, the videography can actually earn me decent money. Yep. And now you've got another revenue stream. Now there's two ways you can make money. You can sell courses, Fair or way. three ways, because you have the travel, and you, you're now selling video content. And then from there, you branched out and created uh, um, your own production company basically yep. and you take on client work now yep. uh, both above and below the water is yep. that correct yeah correct because here in switzerland there's not a, a huge demand for underwater footage of underwater productions really there is a few a few productions here and there a need for underwater footage but it's mainly covered by the national television um i have worked for them as well but it's always it's tough they don't really pay very well and it's tough working with them sometimes it's not yeah. my preferred type of work yeah they you expect know. the world their budget is like that exactly and they want yeah exactly and then stuff. in the end they just send someone in with like a gopro to film for the national television yeah. and in the end it, it, it turns out to be okay and enough for them so um at first i was i was very upset and i was like how can you let someone film with a gopro for like national television nowadays i say well if that's your budget, then this is probably what you should get. And yeah, I'm not exactly. really going to get upset about that anymore. That's fair enough. Have you been staying busy with client work despite the pandemic? I have been very busy with client work um, here in, in, in Zurich, just not underwater-based work. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of uh, companies that have realized with the pandemic happening that, well, you know, uh, um, they ha were having troubles reaching out to their clients and partners in a traditional way, face-to-face, -face, that they had to find other ways, and that's where I stepped in. I found ways to contact larger companies and sell them basically yeah. um, personal videos uh, for their clients. So they can, they can talk to their clients personally, uh, call them by their names, and uh, send a video basically that 
seems very, very personal, but it's still a digital product. Yeah, and professionally yes, produced. Yes, professionally as produced, to a... exactly. Not, not a, a, yeah. a cell phone video, shaky and with bad lighting. Yeah. So we do that stuff. And it's been working quite okay. There's been dark times at the very beginning when the pandemic started i was freaking out because i'm like oh fuck what am i gonna do i, I can't travel i can't like yeah where am i gonna get my money from like yeah. most of what i've done until then seemed to be just crumbling yeah and so it took a little time to set up this stuff here in switzerland the things but it has worked out yeah it's okay i feel for you and i mean the reason i asked that question is because you know so many dive instructors friends of mine in florida yeah have bounced out the industry. Yep. And it's like, hey, the pandemic here. Uh, and one of the biggest challenges there were, okay, so the dive trips, you're daily, mm -hmm. you're running the dive boat, the charter, you're the first mate, you're the guide, whatever. Uh, when that dried up, they didn't have any other revenue stream. Yep. That was it. They relied on their pay and their tips. Yep. And if you've got that video, if you've got sales skills, if you've got you know product knowledge skills, if you've got social media skills, all that kind of good stuff, marketing um, skills that you can complement, yep that gives you a lot more job security than I can just do this one thing. Exactly. And when that one thing goes away, then you go, uh, nothing. Yeah. You know? And then it's like, okay, well, I'll just go and be literal examples, a plumber, an electrician. Yeah. I know two people that left being a dive instructor because those guys were still working during the pandemic, yeah. the plumbers and the electricians. Yeah. So it, it's it's something that I try and instill a lot. So I'm happy to hear you say like, yeah, well, this, this, you know, this part dried up with the travel, mm -hmm. So we lean on the client work, and yeah. they're you know still going strong. So, yeah, it's it's so important to diversify your uh, your revenue streams for sure. Absolutely. What is the future for you when it comes to video production? Well, the future is hopefully that I'll be able to travel a lot more in the future again. Yep. There's uh, already signs at the horizon. There's already already um, sort of um, preset uh, and planned productions um, and projects that will happen next year. One is actually happening this year where I'll be filming uh, the official um, the official event video for the Simas World Championship in underwater photo and video. Um, I was competing the last couple of times, but now they actually asked me, they, they hired me to film the official video of the Love entire it. event. So I'm really happy about that. That's going to happen in October. Um, and... Uh, and next year, there's a couple of things. There's something in the Philippines that I'll do, uh, and there's something in Raja Ampat. Uh, I think we're going to be in the Philippines together, if I'm not mistaken. It could be. Possibly. It could be, possibly. <laughs> Shh, spoilers, don't tell anyone. Yeah, yeah, it's not, not yet to be told. So there we go. And the other thing is, uh, is that I've used the pandemic sort of downtime that I've had to come up with another way of actually... Uh, having an income stream because I think it's really important as you said before to have more than just one income stream and to diversify into different areas and yeah. I've used that downtime that I've had to uh, think about and come up with um, online underwater videography courses because I've yes. I I've been seeing that there's so many people out there that are interested in learning about online oh sorry learning about underwater videography yeah and I was thinking, like, how can I help these people? How can I educate as many people as possible? And I've been trying to do that on my channel, which has worked great. But it's it's very hard to get, like, a very structured course on a YouTube channel, right? So I thought I was just going to make um, proper online underwater videography courses. There's going to be two of them, uh, one for beginners, one for advanced tutors, and they'll be launched at the end of August. So I'm in the finishing stages now with these courses. I'm in the deciding stages on what platform I want to host those. Um, and then at the end of August, they will uh, they will actually launch and go online. And I'm very excited about that. I know that uh, I've heard from a lot of people that they're very excited about seeing those courses too. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's one of the big things that's going to happen in the next couple of months for me. So I, I think you're going to do really well with that. Um, not specifically because it's about underwater filmmaking, but because of the boom in people taking courses online yeah. when the pandemic hit. And, yeah. and that being the new way of self-improvement. Yeah. used to be you went to a bookshop and you bought a book on cooking or you bought a book on right. DIY. But now everything's video, yeah. video content. You've got companies like... Yes, chef that are doing mm -hmm. like you know have Michelin star chefs teaching cooking. Yeah, you've got things like masterclass where exactly. you can learn a tennis serve from you know uh, Serena Williams yeah. is your instructor, or learn photography from Anna Leibovitz or yeah. whatever you want to say. So they have all these like top class instructors, and they're becoming hugely popular. Yeah. 
there's no one doing underwater videography. No, no. The, I was researching it. I think there's there's nobody. I, not not for a course like that. Not with that yeah. kind of structure. It doesn't exist. So I think you're going to do really really well with that. And I believe you're running a competition as well. Correct. Yeah, we're running a contest, a competition, because um, I've just crossed the 5,000 subscriber mark on my channel just recently. And I, when, when things like these happen, I, happen, I always want to give something back to the community. So I decided that I'm going to give away one um, online underwater videography course. The winner can decide whether he wants to or he or she wants to pick the beginners or the advanced version. Um, and I'm going to give away one of these courses. They're, they're going to be priced regularly at $198. So that's the value of the giveaway. The competition runs until the 15th of, um, of August. So you still got a little bit of time to yeah. enter the competition. I'm sure we can put the link down in the video description where people can just sign up for the competition. And then there's going to be a draw um, at the 15th of August. And uh, fingers crossed uh, for you guys to uh, be the winner of that course. Awesome, absolutely awesome. So the only question that remains yes. is are you ready to face the 10 questions we ask everybody? As ready as I'll ever be. Excellent. <laughs> okay, Matthias Lebo, here are the 10 questions we ask everybody. Number one, where was your first dive? My first dive was in Egypt in Sharm el Sheikh. Number two, what was your best dive so far? My best dive, I would say, was in Racha Ampat, where I was diving with manta rays for about 90 minutes. Woo! Uh, three, what is the place you've dived the most? That would be the house reef of uh, the Alamanda Resort, where I worked as a dive instructor for a year. I did about 150 dives on that house reef. Wow. Four, who is your scuba hero, real or fictitious? My scuba hero is Dave Springett, who was my mentor when I uh, got my IDC instructor course and when I first started working in the industry. Five, preferred scuba setup? I like diving with single tanks and a wing jacket, um, open circuit style. Six, favorite dive destination? Very hard, I would say the Asia Pacific, uh, probably Bali, Indonesia. Seven, freshwater or salt? <laughs> well, if you had asked me this question a few years ago, I would say salt, but now I have to say fresh because you don't have to rinse your equipment anymore after that. Eight, last course taken. It's probably my solo diver course that I took many years ago. Nine, next dive trip booked. Madeira Island in Portugal for the World Championship in Underwater Photo and Videography. And ten, bucket list dive you haven't done yet. I haven't been to the Galapagos Islands and I regret it every single day. There we go. Matthias, mate, cheers. Thank you again so much for hosting cheers, me buddy. here in Zurich during my layover. My really appreciate pleasure. it. Mm. Mm. Still amazing. Excellent. It's awesome. How can people follow you? I mean, you know you know this guy. We've been doing the Across the Oceans, what are we, like nine episodes deep now, ten yep. episodes if you yep. count the live stream. Um, how can people follow you? Well, they can follow me on the, the typical platforms on YouTube, obviously. Uh, they can follow me on uh, Facebook and as well on uh, Instagram where I post snippets of uh, the projects that I'm working on and footage that I take. Some behind-the-scenes stuff. Awesome. Yep, exactly. Excellent. And, of course, I will put all of the links to all of Matthias's various social uh, media endeavors in the description of this video below and thanks so much to you guys for watching we're back there we go another meet my dive buddy series and uh, i'm happy that this you know series is continuing and we're carrying on with everything so don't forget to subscribe to Mateus's channel if you haven't done so already and please do subscribe to ours if you haven't done so already and until next time my name's james this is Mateus, and this was your meet my dive buddies episode for this week from divers ready dive safe dive often